Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you what happens when you put LEDs or even laser diodes in liquid nitrogen. Orange LED here. Okay, we're at 1.2 volts. Start turning orange at two volts. Let's put it in the liquid nitrogen. Whoa. It's green. Look at that. And pull it back out. Okay, orange. Green. So this is a really cool effect. When you cool down an LED, it changes the color of the LED. Now let's try a red LED. Okay, here's a red LED in liquid nitrogen. Three, two, one. Now when I put the red LED in the liquid nitrogen, it now changes to yellow or even orange. And now if I take a blue LED light, it changes to more violet. So this looks very purple. It's really hard to see on camera, but this is more violet. Okay, now let's take green. It turns more blue. So let's see, we had red going to yellow, and then we had yellow-orange going to green, and then we had green going to blue, and then blue going to more violet. So these color changes should start to seem familiar to some of you. If you look at the visible color spectrum, you'll notice that it goes from violet to red. The shorter wavelength of light is towards the violet end, and the longer wavelength of light is towards the red end. So higher energy is towards the violet, and lower energy is towards the red end. So it would seem that when we're sticking these LEDs in the liquid nitrogen, it's shifting the wavelength of light coming off of it to have shorter wavelength and higher energy. So we're actually getting higher energy light off of these LEDs when we stick them in liquid nitrogen. Now that should seem a little weird because we're actually cooling these down, taking heat away from them, but it's shifting the light coming off of them to be more energetic. So why is that the case? Well, to understand this, we have to learn a little bit about how LEDs even produce light in the first place. So the way the LEDs work, the part that produces light on them is made with semiconductors. Now there's different types of semiconductors called P-type semiconductors and N-type semiconductors. But the magic happens when you put both of those together. When you put both of those together, you can get electrons from the N-type semiconductor to fall down to a lower energy state. And when that happens, sometimes they can produce a photon of light. Now the wider that energy gap between the N-type and the P-type semiconductors, the more energy will be released when that electron falls from the N-type to the P-type semiconductor. So that's how they make different colors of LEDs. They just make different types of semiconductors doped with different types of atoms, and it changes the band gap, which changes how much energy the electron will release when it falls from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, and so that changes the color. But another way to change the color is not to change the material, but to change the temperature. So as the temperature of the LEDs increase, it makes the atoms inside the semiconductor crystals start to vibrate more. And when those atoms vibrate more, it increases the lattice constant. And once the lattice constant increases a little bit, that actually decreases the band gap. And when the band gap decreases, it means the electrons don't have to fall as far from the N side to the P side of the semiconductor. And so that increases the wavelength of light released. And what does all that mean? It means when you heat up an LED light, it changes the light to be more towards the red end of the spectrum as opposed to the blue end. So one way to increase the heat in the LED is just to overdrive the voltage, just crank up the voltage so more amps will be going through it than should be, and so it'll heat up. And once it heats up, you should see the color change. So let's try it on our orange LED here. So you can see as I crank up the voltage, it goes from yellowish orange to more red. That's because as the temperature went up, the band gap decreased, and so the photons coming off of it are less energetic, actually, even though the temperature is higher. And what that means is that the opposite is also true. As you decrease the temperature, that increases the band gap. That means the energy that's released when those electrons fall to the other side, it means that there's a shorter wavelength and higher energy photon coming off of that LED. So you can actually get a pretty broad spectrum of light when you stick an LED in liquid nitrogen. 
because once it's in the liquid nitrogen, you have adequate cooling so that you can cool it to any temperature you want. But if you crank up the voltage, then you can actually heat it even though it's in the liquid nitrogen, it'll heat up enough to even blow out the diode. So once it's inside the liquid nitrogen, you can actually get it to shift either towards the red end or the blue end of the spectrum, depending on how much you've cranked up the voltage. And what's cool about all of this is you can do this even with laser diodes. So you could actually turn a red laser to an orange laser, sticking it in liquid nitrogen. Let's try it. All right, so I have my red laser diode in this cup here. Let's turn on my voltage to it. I have three volts going to it. Now let's see what happens when I put liquid nitrogen in the cup. Okay, here we go. Oh, the laser's actually going out in there. Let's turn up the voltage a little bit. Oh, yeah, I need to turn up the voltage to four volts. So it required a higher voltage to keep it going. Okay, it looks like it's turning more orange now. Now a side note here that when you decrease the temperature of semiconductors, the resistance actually goes up as opposed to goes down for conductors. So you actually have to increase the voltage more as you decrease the temperature so that you can actually keep applying enough voltage to light the LED. Look at that, look how it's just orange now. Okay, so that was pretty cool. Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.